Dune Part 2 is, in my opinion, one of the best blockbusters in recent years. From an objective standpoint, anything more than that at this point borders on hyperbole, but on a personal level, this is one of my new favorite movies. Most movies I give the distinction of favorite to have deeply resonated with me. I already have videos on why the Spider-Verse movies and the Fablemans resonated with me, and in both instances it is, among other things, because of how much I related to the characters and themes. With Dune Part 2, I relate to neither the characters nor the themes. Not to say the film has bad characters or the themes aren't interesting and compelling, you would be more likely to find me saying the opposite, but I've seen movies with great characters and themes, films that are also technically impressive and deliver a unique experience, but while I think those films are incredible, they aren't necessarily my favorites. However, what Dune Part 2 has above a lot of other movies, for me, is passion. I saw a video recently where Denis Villeneuve, director of both of the new Dune movies and other incredible cinematic achievements, broke down a scene from part two. The scene in question is one in which Paul is tasked with writing a sandworm in order to be fully accepted by the Furman people. It's a great video, and it made me even more impressed by a scene and a film I was already insanely impressed by, but what I most wanted to talk about was something Denis said near the end of the video. And now that both movies are completed, take me a lot of time to digest this experience. I will say that there are some sequences, like this one, the worm ride, that is very, very close to the dream. Dune Part 2 is great for a plethora of reasons, but to me, they all stem from Denis Villeneuve's passion for the material. Long before he ever had the chance to direct a feature film, Denis Villeneuve was a fan of Dune. He read the book when he was a teenager, and he talked in interviews, like one with Christopher Nolan for the Director's Cut podcast, about how he read Dune when he was first starting to discover filmmaking, and he even storyboarded some scenes for a potential Dune movie with one of his friends. As he grew as a filmmaker and made it into Hollywood, he kept an eye out for development on a Dune movie. He was hoping someone would make an adaptation that could fully capture what he loved about Dune, and eventually, he was lucky enough to have the opportunity to do it himself. Denis is, by self-admission, a totalitarian dreamer. He says his teenage self was arrogant and pretentious, and his goal with a Dune movie was to make it something his teenage self would have liked. What sticks out to me is that he does not fully believe he achieved that. In a breakdown of a scene from part one, Villeneuve says that there are some aspects of the, his adaptation he knew were not good enough, aspects that did not live up to the dream. I don't want to make this sound like he is disappointed with how his adaptation turned out, he seems quite happy with the result, but he does not seem to be happy with all of it. I think I can say with relative confidence that his version of Dune is not as good as what he had imagined for it. His visions of what the film could be were not representative of the finished project, and I feel that. While I would hesitate to compare myself to Villeneuve in almost any way, I have a lot of ideas and hopes for what a creative endeavor of mine will look like. I probably dream more than I actually do, going down plenty of hypothetical avenues of fantasized futures without putting in the work to make them what they are. I often don't go through with a project unless I have a distinct dream for it, which is one of the reasons I usually only make one video a month, if that. The other reason is just plain laziness. When I do make one, it usually isn't like I had envisioned it, and it almost always fails to live up to the dream. Dreams are a bit of a double-edged sword. They inspire and motivate people, like Denis Villeneuve or like me, this sentence is a slippery slope, but they are never fully attainable. They're always slightly out of reach, better than anything they can ever inspire, so why go through with them? Imagine, after decades of dreaming about making a Dune movie, you actually do. That would be like if I actually got to make a big budget action drama with Ryan Gosling that redefines cinema. It probably won't happen, but it's fun to dream about. However, Denis Villeneuve adapting Dune for the big screen did happen, and I'm impressed. Not just by the films themselves, or the film itself if you want to count Dune as one big movie, which it kind of is, but by the fact that Denis Villeneuve actually went through with making them. There's another line from Villeneuve's breakdown of Paul's Sandworm Ryan scene that really stood out to me, and it was this. When I, I, I decided to make this adaptation of the novel, the first artist that I approached to help me to do so was Hans Zimmer. Hans is, like me, a massive fan of the novel. Hans gave me a warning. He says, is it a good idea to tackle your childhood dreams? Are we meant to fail? You cannot bring to the screen the full potential of the dream of the teenager. I honestly can't imagine making something I've been dreaming of making for decades. I tried writing a book one time based on an idea I had a year earlier, and I couldn't even get through a chapter of that because it never lived up to the version in my head. I still tell myself I'll write it, and maybe I will, but I'm not in any rush to do so out of fear of it not living up to my dreams. 
I've cancelled videos I've put months of work into because I can't ever get it to be as good as the version in my head. If I wasn't so obsessed with Dune, I probably would have cancelled this video, and maybe you'd have been thanking me for that because I honestly don't know how this is turning out. Most of my videos I upload, I do so not because of the final product that lives up to my hopes, but because I put all this work into it and I want other people to see it. And that's the conundrum, isn't it? George Lucas has a quote that I think perfectly summarizes this, and it reads, I like to say that films are never finished, they're only abandoned. I think every artist who makes something has something they would have done differently about it. But at some point, they've got to accept whatever they're making is as good as it's going to be, and just make it. I know none of my videos or books or short stories or what have you have ever lived up to my expectations, but they actually exist outside of my head, and at best, at least communicate a sliver of my dream to other people. There's a line from Dune Part 1, specifically from the best character, Duncan Idaho. Dreams make good stories, but everything important happens when we're awake, because that's when we make things happen. I like hearing about Denis' teenage vision for Dune, but I like Denis' current Dune better because it exists. I can't watch whatever teenage Denis Villeneuve would have made, I can't watch The Dream, but I can see where he gets close to it with his adaptations, and his sincere attempt to reach The Dream is what makes me adore his adaptations of Dune, especially Part 2, as much as I do. While all of that is well and good and gives a lot of context to the movie, it doesn't give any insight as to why the movie itself is special. After all, there have been movies made by passionate filmmakers that I haven't really thought were good, so in what ways does Dune Part 2 differ? The quickest answer I can think of is with Paul Atreides. Paul is an interesting protagonist because he isn't really the good guy. If you've seen Part 2 or Denis Villeneuve's comments on Part 2, you'll know he's meant to be more of an anti-hero. He isn't fully the villain, as he still saves the Fremen from the Harkonnens, but he also leads them to slaughter billions in a quest to make him emperor. This is interesting to me both within the context of the film and its themes, namely the perils of blind fanaticism, and because Paul is the protagonist of a major studio blockbuster, which are usually designed for as broad an audience as possible. Not to say blockbusters can't have depth, they can and often do, just that most blockbusters like their protagonist to be close to morally right, especially by the end of the story, and the villain's morally wrong. I think it's really cool and really emblematic of Denis' vision for this movie that Paul can be depicted as as morally dubious as he is by the end of the film, and I think it's one of the easiest examples to point to when discussing what makes this film special. Another easy example to point to is the scene where Paul learns to ride the sandworm, because that's the scene Denis points to, too. In the aforementioned Vanity Fair scene breakdown, Villeneuve refers to this scene as one of the scenes he thinks he got close to his teenage vision for a Dune film, and I can see why. The way the scene builds tension is incredible, pulling inspiration from Jaws where you hear the sandworm before seeing it. Also it's neat this movie references Jaws because Steven Spielberg interviewed Denis Villeneuve about Dune Part 2 on the Director's Cut podcast and called it, and I quote, One of the most brilliant science fiction films I have ever seen. And it was mind-blowing learning how much of this was practically done. Who knew they could find a sandworm on such short notice? All joking aside, the sound of the scene is wonderful, and the tension as Paul tries to control himself and eventually control the sandworm is quite remarkable. This scene feels like a scene he's been dreaming of making since childhood, and I can see why he considers it to be a scene close to the dream. Finally, the scene where Paul gives his big speech to the Fremen, which I've seen a lot of praise for online, and rightfully so. I think it's really telling of how much Denis cares about doing this story justice that he has Paul deliver his speech mostly in Chikobsa, the Fremen language. It shows how he cares about every little detail, and it emphasizes Paul's actions and how he is essentially pandering to the Fremen and fanning the flame of their belief. I don't even think I noticed this on my first watch, but it's a really cool detail, and as with just about everything involving Paul in this half, I was surprised and glad Denis was given the creative control to take as many risks as he does in such a mainstream blockbuster. There are certainly other examples in this movie of Denis's passion for doing the story justice, but those are the ones that stood out the most to me. Denis Villeneuve is not a director who makes compromised or low-effort films, but to me, the Dune movies, especially Part 2, showcase his care even more than anything he has made in the past. A large part of this is due to his affinity for the source material, but another, perhaps larger part, is due to his dream for what his adaptation of Dune would look like. It probably would have been easier for him to do something else, because chances are it never would have been as good as his dreams, but Denis Villeneuve went through with adapting Dune, and he made a unique, captivating film with a clear passion for the material on display in just about every moment. 
I don't know what I would do if I ever managed to achieve my dreams. I don't think I ever would have legitimately expected to get there, so I don't know if I would know what to do, but I know it probably wouldn't be as good as what I had dreamed about for all of those years. Still, Denis and his Dune movies make me want to try, because even if it doesn't turn out to be everything I dreamed, isn't it worth it for when it gets very close to the dream?